It is evening, and the Rome team are recharging their batteries. Meanwhile, back at their beam line. I think we have problem again with the simple changer. I don't know why. It says that the basket selector is jammed, and it says fatal error. After completing their powder diffraction experiments, the Bayreuth team start to work on their single crystal analysis. They receive unexpected help from Marco, a former postdoc on Michael's beamline. I'm continuing a collaboration as a visiting scientist, so I will spend uh, some time here during uh, beam time activity. We are lucky, he's very well familiar with this machine and with this beamline, with uh, software and uh, he helps us in the data interpretation. Perform a single crystal uh, diffraction at very high pressure. There are a few beam lines in the world that can uh, do this. And uh, from the data analysis we are performing, uh, it seems we can get accurate uh, structure refinement uh, even at very, very high pressure. We doing decompression of a crystal, uh, crystal of boron, which was at pressure around 60 GPA, and now we going down in pressure, and it behaves differently when on compression. And we do not understand the physical nature of this phenomenon. You need to use all your time you have here, but uh, every time you got something nice from your results, it's like second breathing. Not probably likely we'll walk all the night today, but I hope that we will finish what we have planned. Night is falling on the synchrotron, and the Rome team are still collecting data. I had a problem with a basket, and apparently some of the vials cannot be taken by the sample changer, so we will need to take them manually and mount them. We prefer finishing the testing and the collection of the crystals that can be mounted by the sample changer before shutting it down and starting mounting crystals manually. Unfortunately, the Rome team used incompatible vials for some of their samples, but a local contact is there to help, completing the experiment before beam time is over. The crystals had to be transferred always under liquid nitrogen. We will have to do it for the last eight crystals. The only danger is to lose the samples. With your hands, you can always make a mistake and let the crystal fall or touch something with the tongs. Okay, now you don't panic, you have 30 seconds. Uno, due, tre. Okay. And as usual, you do it at uh, 2 in the morning. <laughs> Beam time is over for the Bayreuth team. As usually, the most interesting result starts to come in the last evening. We saw that there something interesting happened with our material, and we wanted to understand what is going on and how it's going on. It is a very important general technological development from the side of the synchrotron, from the side of the ID9, that we now capable to collect diffraction data with such quality that it's possible to refine crystal structure and such extreme conditions. We are really very happy now. Our experiment is over. We were able to collect data and simultaneously process them. And now we are leaving ESRF with preliminary results. That results which we got for those days, they so nice that they give us possibility to do plan for our future work and uh, to see in which direction we should go with our experiments. Unlike the Bayreuth team, the Rome team have to wait until they get back to their institute before they can analyze their data for results. 
Despite their difficulties, they had some good news about one of their crystals. We had a positive surprise with a crystal that underwent cross-linking reaction and it diffracted even better than the normal crystal. This time, with the aid of the sample changer, we managed to test more than 60 crystals in a reasonable amount of time. We managed to collect more than 20 crystals. And so this time, really, a lot of work could be performed for all the lab. What is the following steps for you now? Going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs>